My name is Sergeant First Class John Adams, and I was awarded the Bronze Star of Valor for my actions in Salman Pak, Iraq in October of 2004. I was in 263 Armored Battalion. We'd be the guys rolling out and clearing, we call it clearing a route to ensure that it was safe. The majority of our missions were conducted on our tanks, but sometimes we'd go out at night in Humvees just looking for the bad guy. For Sergeant First Class John Adams, the woods around his home in Little Marysville, Indiana, are a warm reminder of the endless outdoor afternoons of his childhood. Anything outdoors was what I did. Bird hunting, any kind of hunting, fishing, getting out in the woods and swinging from the, the trees. But it was television images of the first Gulf War that would inspire this young man to service. I would see these huge tanks rolling across the desert with dust and everything behind them. It was exciting. As a high school senior, unsure of what to do next, John Adams sat down with a recruiter and discussed the opportunities awaiting him in the United States Army. My recruiter, Sergeant Hall, said to me, do you want to carry your weapon or would you like your weapon to carry you? And it clicked right then. John Adams became a tanker and would one day command his own M1A1 Abrams tank. It's 68 tons, goes 40 miles an hour. Being in control of, of all of that is, it's a phenomenal feeling. Adams trained at posts around the world, including Germany and Korea. But while in Kosovo in 2003 as a NATO peacekeeper, his unit received new orders. Getting the, the notification that my unit was going to Iraq, uh, it, it was real. But I knew that, that we were trained and that we were going in prepared. During Operation Iraqi Freedom, insurgent success can be measured by their ability to disrupt the movement of coalition forces and supplies. Their most effective weapon is the Improvised Explosive Device, or IED. Once in Iraq, one of Staff Sergeant Adams' main responsibilities would be to keep the supply routes free of enemy activity. The majority of the time, we were on tanks, just because I believe of the presence that, that the tank holds. We never seen anything. We got into it in Humvees. At midnight on October 13, 2004, four Humvees were patrolling alternate supply route Bismarck near the village of Salman Pak. Staff Sergeant Adams was vehicle commander in the last Humvee. My lieutenant called back and said that there was a vehicle on the side of the road and he wanted me to check it out. We slowed down and I seen a man on the, the passenger side of the car. It was dark. The only illumination that we had was the, the Humvee headlights. Adams drew his 9mm fitted with a laser pointer. Good for getting people's attention. When you normally see a guy on the side of the road and you're fixing a car, Okay, he's, he's got a flat tire. But if you're in Iraq, you're in a combat situation. Is that guy really fixing his car? But as Adams approached the car, two more men jumped out of the shadows, firing automatic weapons. Adams emptied his pistol, downing the first man, and retreated to the Humvee in a hail of fire. As bullets pinged off the vehicle, he radioed for assistance and grabbed his M4 as his driver and gunner returned fire. As the two remaining attackers fled into the darkness, Adams carefully approached their vehicle. I looked down and, and seen the IED that, that he was uh, acting like he was working on a tire, but he was actually working on the IED. The IED turned out to be a complex daisy chain of five artillery shells wired together in three separate holes. Adams had interrupted the bomb maker as he was covering up the fifth and final explosive. There was a lot of fuel and, and oil being transported daily. Uh, a daisy-chained IED of this magnitude would have been devastating. For his extraordinary bravery in the face of enemy fire, resulting in the confiscation of numerous weapons and explosives, and preventing the detonation of a lethal device, Staff Sergeant John Adams was awarded the Bronze Star with Valor. Today, as an Army recruiter, Adams revels in the three things he loves most his family, the outdoors, and the Army. I just want to kind of open it up and let y'all ask some questions. Anything now I get to come out here and tell my story and maybe fulfill a kid that was, you know, just like me. At a recent Notre Dame basketball game, Adams was honored again for his heroism. And in the din of the applause could be heard the voice of a nation, grateful to those charged with protecting its freedom.
I've got the opportunity to change people's lives now in recruiting. I love doing this. I'm, they're gonna have to kick me out. <laughs>